Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have the very same problem we did in the previous video, but we're going to do it with a different method. In the previous video, we used the mesh analysis method. Here we're going to draw the equivalent circuit. So notice that this is the equivalent circuit uh, for the transistor. And we're going to use the node analysis method to solve this one. What I need to do is pick a node. I'll pick this node right here. I have a current entering the node. Let's call this I1 a current leaving the node here and a current leaving the node here. Let's call this current I2, let's call this current I3. We can see using the node analysis that all the currents entering must equal all the currents leaving, which means that I1, which is the current entering, must equal the sum of the two currents leaving, I2 plus I3. Notice that the voltage of that node right here must be 0.7 volts because it's 0.7 volts above ground via this circuit right there. I1 is a current in this branch right here. We have the voltage difference between ground and that point here. We know that this point must be a 0.7 volts, 2 volts minus 0.7. That's 2 volts minus 0.7 volts divided by the resistance on that branch, which is 100K equals I2, that's the current in this branch, which is the voltage difference, that's 0.7 volts to ground, so 0.7 volts divided by the resistance, 200k ohms, plus I3, and I3 would be the base current, let's call it I sub E. From this, we should be able to find the base current because everything else is known on the circuit, so write I base is equal to 1.3 volts divided by 100k, minus, when we bring this to the other side, 0.7 divided by 200k. And now we need a calculator. So 1.3 divided by 100k minus 0.7 divided by 200k equals 9.5 microamps, which is the same base current that we got in the previous video. 9.5 microamps for the base current. So now we're ready to go to this loop right here. Here we can use the Kirchhoff voltage loop method. We can just go around the circuit like that. Let's say that this here is I of the emitter. And notice I did have the arrow drawn differently here. So maybe I'll just go ahead and follow suit and have it go in the same direction like that. So that the direction of the loop is equals the direction of the arrow that I drew there. Notice that this is a current source, it's a dependent current source, it depends on the base current. This current here will be 150 times the base current, which is what we know from the transistor, because beta is equal to 150. So drawing the KVL loop, KVL loop, around the loop starting at this point right here, we can see that we have a voltage increase right there, that's V sub O. Then going across the resistor, but notice we're going against the current. The current is in this direction. We're going against the current. That's a voltage rise. That's plus resistance 1000 times the current I sub E. And then we go from there to there across the voltage difference there. That's minus 16 volts. Coming back around to zero equals zero. Now I need to find a relation between the emitter current and the base current. We know that the emitter current, I emitter current, is equal to 150 times the base current, I sub E. Now let's see if they're in the same direction. So we have the base current coming in this way, we have I sub E coming that way, so that's the same direction. I sub E equals 150 I sub E, that's equal to 150 times the 9.5 microamps. And let's figure out what that is equal to. Nine times 150 equals 1.425 milliamps for the current. That's equal to 1.425 milliamps, I sub E. And if I plug that in here, we can then solve for V sub O. V sub O, that's the voltage across the transistor, is equal to a positive 16 volts minus 1,000 times I sub E. And that's equal to 16 volts minus 1,000 times 1.425 milliamps, 1 0.425 milliamps. Multiplying that, we get 16 minus 1.425, and that's now in volts, so this is equal to 
75 volts across the transistor. Notice that using the equivalent circuit, the problem becomes a little bit easier. We can use the note analysis method right here on this node, knowing that this is 0.7 volts above ground because of the voltage difference across the base from the base to the emitter. And then we can then very easily solve the third loop using the KVL method there and find the voltage across the transistor. Much quicker using the equivalent circuit. So instead of drawing, drawing the, the transistor like this, if we draw the equivalent circuit like this, causing uh, having this as being a what we call a dependent current source, and knowing that we have about a 0.7 volt difference between the base and the emitter, we can then easily solve for the transistor circuit using this method instead. So take your pick, whichever you like better. You like the mesh analysis better on the previous example, or use the node analysis method here with the equivalent circuit in this example. And that's how it's done.